Hey everybody, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. My plan today is to make a new duplex gun for spraying uh, the silver plate. So when you order a kit, a silver plating kit uh, online, you're gonna get something that looks like this monstrosity. Uh, this is like half a liter each bottle and the spray nozzle is just huge compared compared to the one that i made which is pretty tiny since one of the big drawbacks to using silver plate on lures is the cost using this is kind of crazy it's like spraying uh with a fire hose so when i got this in the mail well along with all the chemicals i knew i was gonna have to make a change so just looking at it, and I'll show you this gun, I knew I had recognized that little DG-10 uh, from somewhere. And it's from this. This is a Harbor Freight blowgun or air gun, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and it's got the elongated nozzle, but you can see it's the exact same gun. So I took the one I had and I modified it. I essentially copied the design because it's pretty good. It's a pretty clever design. I copied the mount for the bottles. Obviously, I downsized the bottles substantially. These are only two ounce, they're around 70 uh, milliliters. And they're bottles that are originally meant for suction draw uh, airbrushes. So if you wanna make one of these things, here's what you're gonna need. You'll need a couple of these uh, uh, airbrush draw bottles. They're pretty cheap, you can get them online. I wouldn't get anything bigger than four ounces each. In fact, when I fill these, completely i can do about 25 lures just with this little bit of, of uh, chemical you'll also need one of these guns i got this at harbor freight i'm sure you can get it online pretty inexpensively and easily you'll need some hose this is a, a, a teflon hose and so you just need something that the inside diameter will work on your pickup tube in your in your bottle and then the tricky part in the plumbing is that you have to go from this very thin tube right here which is nothing more than the spray tube off of a lubricant can like wd-40 or something like that you need to be able to go from that very thin diameter which is about a sixteenth of an inch uh, back out to your connection at your uh, at your bottle the way i did it on my original one was just to step down from uh, the teflon tube to another smaller diameter hose and then to a piece of even smaller hose which is this is uh uh, fuel hose for a small two-stroke motor and then that fits right over my little spray tube I've got some of this clear fuel line and I, I think it was like a dollar fifty a foot and I bought way too much but the inside diameter is perfect and I can slip I can slip it over the uh, little red tube and know that it's gonna have a good good fit on it and not uh, leak or uh, fall off in the middle of my work. I'm gonna try to make everything on this, um, on this gun uh, out of things that you would be able to get a hold of. This nozzle, uh, I, this little round cylinder of plastic, I actually had a few of these plastic uh, spacers just laying around. And the nice thing about them is that it isn't super hard plastic. You can kind of dig your nail into it. And that's the kind of plastic you want to use when you make your nozzle. Now you can use just about any material. I wouldn't use any metals uh, because it'll react with the chemicals. And you probably don't want to use wood because wood will soak up the water and the chemicals and eventually split. So what I'm going to use is uh, a few of these pieces of casting resin that I cut off of that big swim bait uh, lure that I made. But I'm going to use these. They're wedges right now. I'm just going to uh, cut little rectangles out of them. And that's what I'm going to make my nozzle from. I'm going to go ahead and utilize this uh, Teflon tubing. This is the kind of tubing uh, folks use for ice makers. I think that's what it's made for. And the beauty of this is that it's really resilient. It's easy to work with and it fits perfectly on the little pickup nozzle on your on your jar and it can just be press fit in there and you don't have to worry about it now instead of going through all the trouble of the step downs and trying to find hoses to do that i'm simply going to take the hose 
put it inside here and hot glue it in. Uh, and this way I can still pull it apart at the, um, the jar, but this will be permanently fixed to this plastic. All right, let's take this thing out of the package. The spray gun comes uh, out of the package with a short nozzle on it. And I'll, you just have to unscrew that. And you can save that for something else. And then the long nozzle is what we're going to be using. It's got a O-ring on it, so it'll seal nicely. You get it on there and snug it down. The diameter of this nozzle is right at 13 64ths, which is right at five millimeter. So to make the nozzle for this, you'll need a drill bit just smaller, which is 3 16 which is 4.7 millimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and use uh, this piece of scrap, two-part resin. I'm going to cut it into a little rectangle. But first, I'm going to go ahead and drill all my holes so I got something to hold on to so it's not so small. If you have a drill press, it's not a bad idea to do this on a drill press. That's not too bad. Now the next part is uh, a little trickier and that's getting the holes for uh, the little entry nozzles, the little mister nozzles. And you want to drill those as close to the edge as you can. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll score a little mark on there. Um, and you want to come out across the center of this hole. So I want to use a drill bit that's just slightly smaller than the tube. And the tube is 2.2 millimeters, or about 11 1 28ths, if that makes sense to you. So I'm going to use a 5 64ths, which uh, gives me a little bit of friction, which allows me to friction fit this little tube in here. That way I can adjust it in and out when I'm uh, calibrating the flow. Perfectly centered on that hole, and then back about a 16th of an inch. And the same thing here. So I'm going to take my time and run it straight through. And this material is soft enough that I don't have to worry about drilling very hard. All right, so now I've got that hole. I can work on getting that in there. And you can see it'll slide in there. Uh, I'm not going to push it all the way through. I just need to cut this off somewhere around here. All right, and now I'm gonna take this to the sander and just refine it just a little bit so it doesn't look so rough. Okay, so that's the nozzle. It's uh, basically complete. All right, so that should have us as far as shape for this guy. And we'll just press it on the tip of this. It's going on nicely. There it is. Okay, looks a little bit uh, like the end of a cannon on a tank. So now the next big thing to make is going to be the bracket that holds the bottles. And I'm going to use a piece of plastic. This is the bottom of an old um, battery box. And I'm going to use this because it's, it's light, it's easy to cut, it's easy to work. I don't have to worry about it oxidizing or rotting. So I want to kind of model my bracket after this one, uh, this aluminum one on this big one. I might make it a little wider, maybe a half inch wider. This one is four inches from center to center. So I'm going to go four and a half inches center to center. Um, and I'm going to center it on this little V here, which works out really well for me. From here to here, uh, to the center of the bottles. So the center of the bottles are going to be there somewhere. Uh, now I want to go ahead and give it some kind of contour. So I'm just going to kind of semi-freehand. This is just a little round disc that I'm more or less centering. Same thing here. 
and that should give me more or less a good shape uh, to cut out on the bandsaw. Let's go to the bandsaw. Let's start cutting. So I went ahead and left the stiffening ridges uh, in this and that'll help me uh, make sure that this doesn't flex too much. All right, now I just need to drill uh, the hole. So I'll use a hole saw for that and then I'll sand down these hard edges and get a hole for the mounting hole. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the shape of uh, my bracket. You don't have to randomly have a perfect piece of plastic laying around. You can actually go and just pick up a really inexpensive dollar store uh, cutting board that's made out of thin plastic and you can use that or you can actually go to uh, one of the big box stores, uh, hardware stores and get yourself a sheet of thin aluminum. That's a little more expensive than uh, basically garbage, but uh, it'll do the trick. So to finish up the mounting bracket, I really need to get the dimension of the hole. And if you look at how this is mounted, it's mounted on the connector to uh, the quick connect. And so it takes a little bit of shimming. On this one, you can see where they have a plastic washer and uh, a bit of a steel washer. On mine, I just used a piece of rubber gasket and a, a, and a small washer and it did the trick. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this apart. So now I just need to drill that hole. All right, I'm going to use this step drill and get this hole drilled. All right, that should do it. And that should take care of it. Let's see if it fits. Okay, so this should work pretty well. It'll uh, be out of my way. So now I need to put a quick connect on this. Before I assemble this, I need to get a little bit of Teflon tape on this pipe thread. And that should be quick and easy. Okay, I stuck a rubber washer on this thing to sort of take up the space. And now we'll just tighten her down. Okay, that's nice and snug should uh, be nice and stiff in there should be able to put these bottles in so these bottles should fit in there pretty nice once i got this thing fully assembled so the gun's pretty much ready to go just need to assemble the hoses so the first thing i'm gonna do is, is cut two pieces of this teflon hose about an inch and a quarter each all right i've got two of them cut i need to insert the hose and get it hot glued in there you know, I was thinking maybe I can use a UV glue or UV resin as glue uh, instead of hot glue. Because I don't really like hot glue. It's messy and it's kind of hard to make it look good. So I'm going to try doing this since this tube is almost transparent. I think I can get it to work. Let's try it. Feels like it's working. I'm going to put just a little more on here and that should do the trick. Uh, so you don't really have to worry that you've got to have a whole lot of strength. So that actually formed a pretty nice bond. It's on there good and it doesn't look bad at all. Let's do the other one. All right, I think that did the job. I can put away that glue. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. That's a, a nice quick trick. So now it's a matter of getting these things connected. All right, so all I need is for this to come up and connect at the nozzle. So let's go ahead and insert our tubes. It's really important to cut all this hose the same size. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to calibrate the flow if, if all these pieces are e equal in size. All right, there it is. Now, you gotta stick to the equal amounts of, of hose. So I'll go ahead and eyeball this length 
cut it and then cut the other one exactly the same length. All right, we're ready to rock. Now I'm gonna assemble it and all we gotta do from here is to calibrate the flow and make sure we've got water coming out at the same rate from each bottle. And I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so I've set up this wet basin, this little spray booth, uh, and I've gone ahead and connected uh, my air. So when I test this, I'll start it off uh, with this pressure set kind of high, around 20, 25 PSI, uh, just to get a lot of flow so I can see how quickly the water's going down. So I'll crank it up. So right now it's 25 PSI, and I think you'll be able to see that big mist coming out there's a lot of water coming out of there and you can see where I tested it once before but you can uh, certainly get a lot of water flowing out of this thing the key is to get it flowing at the same rate and then try to get it flowing at the lowest possible PSI the lower the better so the first thing I'd like to do is to sight uh, the tip and see if I can tell if one is blowing more than the other right now they look really good let me see if I can position the camera so you can see it so I'm not sure if the camera uh, caught that but hopefully you can see it I'm going to continue to, uh, to tweak the uh, tubes and if you look if you look on the inside here you can just see that the tubes are sort of sticking in just a little ways and it's a little bit of a dance pull them back and forth because they do affect each other but by moving both of them you can really tweak in a nice even flow so I'm gonna run a little more it looks like they're flowing pretty good but I'm gonna run it a little more just to be sure let me turn the pressure down to see how low I can go and still get flow Wow, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm at about 10 PSI and still getting some pretty nice flow. Low pressure spraying is really important when you're spraying this stuff. You want to be able to spray uh, very little material and get it out there. But you can see it's coming out in a very fine mist, very, very few uh, droplets. And that's really important. So I've got it flowing really evenly now uh, and it blows really well at both extremes really high and really low i still get a nice stream coming out at 10 psi that's fantastic so i'm really happy with this build i think uh the look is real nice uh i really like the lightweight plastic and the ergonomics is really improved so from this monstrosity to this nice, delicate and precision instrument, uh, it's a big change. So don't let it intimidate you. It's not hard to build. It's really simple parts and stuff you can do with hand tools. So if you're getting into uh, two part silver spray, uh, go for it. Don't buy their gun, build your own. And if you've got questions on the build, go ahead and put them in the comments and I'll be happy to help you where I can. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next video. Oh,